What's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here with Ruben and Adam once again to discuss traveling with firearms and ammunition. Ruben just slammed some coffee there, I think, so he should mm-hmm. be ready to go. Uh, so on the table in front of us now are a couple of pelicans, and there's a soft case inside one of these things. Uh, there's a smaller pelican that's full of some blue gun pistols. And so specifically what we wanted to, to get at here, last time we talked about flying with firearms and ammunition. How do you do it? Is it even allowed? Yes, it is. So you can go back and listen to that if you're not familiar with it yet. But how should you go about packing your firearms and ammunition if you're taking it uh, when you do when you're out, out and about traveling, you know, out of the state or something like that? Uh, you guys take it away. How should you go about packaging this stuff? Let's keep with the flying theme for so now. So to fly on an airline, it has to be a hard-sided locked container. That is the guideline. Um, You're going to want to add that layer of the airport gorillas are going to be handling your firearms. So you're going to want a level of protection too. So most folks are using some sort of uh, hard-sided waterproof tough guy case. They're made by Pelican, SKB. Royal case. Yep. All those. But some kind of case like that. And then you're going to want multiple locks on it. Mm -hmm. And the idea of multiple locks is when when it's closed, they don't want someone to be able to pry it open from one side and get things out. They, yeah. It has to have enough locks on it so they can't get it open that far. Um, there's a very um, camouflaged rule in some airlines that every lock, mm-hmm. every port for a lock has to have a lock on it. If there's a lock hole there, it's yep. got to have a lock yep. on it. It's yep. not in the firearms rules. It's in the hazardous materials rules near plutonium um but um the simple thing to that is you can just cut this off and then you wouldn't have to have a lock there but have two locks on it yeah two or more locks on it and make it so it can't when you undo the things that don't have locks on them it can't be because when when you start packing your stuff and i've had it happen where i've got two locks here right one on the either side of the handle on the Mm -hmm. inside i've had somebody uh ask me if you can pry it open like, yeah, no, yep. you can't. Which is yeah, okay. that's what they're getting at. And then you'll want some sort of protective padding inside. Usually, in these these cases come with this this open cell foam that you can cut into the different shapes mm-hmm. uh, for like a custom fit. That's the route that most people go, especially if you're going to be traveling with like the same configuration of item. Yeah, competition lot. guns. A lot of times, yep. guys will have their rifle, pistol, shotgun. Um, or whatever they're flying with, um, cut out, and then that gun has a specific spot. Yep. Yeah. And then another option that we go a little bit more versatile is I've actually started using soft cases inside of hard cases. So the soft case has some padding to it. I can put whatever I want in the soft case, which is often different things for yep. a lot of the stuff that we're doing. And then that case fits inside and closes up. It has the added benefit of when we get to the airport and they want you to open it up. You open it up and they don't see anything. It's just another box. Yeah, you're box. not going to yeah. scare a bunch of kids or people yeah. that are like yeah, really exactly. sort of finicky around it or something. Now, and what, then, uh, what kind of padding are you thing. adding to like kind of how you have it I laid just, out here? I just then. use this padded uh, gun case. So the gun case itself is just padded. the case. It's all like you're a little thin mm-hmm. layer of foam on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, you but, get a good one, yeah. you know, from you know Armageddon Gear, uh, Voodoo, um, Brownells, mm-hmm. the Midway Sniper Drag Bag is a really popular one. Mm-hmm. That's enough foam for, for most of what you're going to do. Nice part, right. too. Adam was probably going to say it, but I'm going to steal it. When you get there, uh, you don't have to drag around your hard case. You leave exactly. this in the rental or leave it in your hotel room and carry the nice that case around nice. with you. Yep. That yeah. is yeah. nice. It's, it's really working, nice. Working out a Pelican I didn't think case of that, sucks. actually. So even like this this top of the shell here, you would just have that. Yep. The mm-hmm. Yep. Now, Mark, I know you would put in a little extra padding because you're a little I'd throw nervous in a, about I'd throw this in a little stuff. Bit. Now, I've I'd been known to get bit. four full-size ARs in this case, and when I do that, I do wrap them a little bit so that they're not... Because two of them are touching each other, so I separate them with a little bit of a buffer in mm-hmm. one compartment. And then there's two compartments in this case. So both compartments of the case have two guns in them, staggered. I will add padding for that. Get yourself a couple of but I'm athletic it. socks, the nice... Mm-hmm. Wool ones, you just put it right over the barrel. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I can picture that. It's almost like uh, like shoes. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is a slick little setup for pistols over here too. It's got yeah. uh, foam, just rectangular cutouts that the pistols fit right into. These yep. are some uh, lovely blue gun 1911s here that fit in full size magazine. Yep. Cutouts so when we're doing too. we're doing smaller demos with just pistols. Like this is a kit that we can just have loaded, ready to go. It's a lot handier than uh, some of the bigger cases. 
Um, so yeah, that's, that's one that we use for a lot of LE demos. And then another one that we started using a lot more, I can't claim this idea. It's been around for a while, but it's something I've started using lately is I use these bigger roller luggage Pelican cases or, you know, uh, hard sided cases. And I actually full size SBRs will fit in there. Okay. Assembled. And then I put all the rest of my luggage in there, all my laundry and supplies, shoes, all that stuff, all in one case. And then that is the bag that I check. And when you're rolling around with a, you know, a rectangular size or, right. you know, oh, this yeah. not gun shaped case. Very much so. Yeah. It's a lot these more things, lower these profile. These long skinny ones just scream gun. Golf clubs. E- right. Everyone know. Yeah. When you go into the Tools. airport, everybody knows exactly what this is. Exactly. So that one could be, yeah, not could be anything. a little bit different. Yet another reason for SBRs. Exactly. Yet another. Now, Mark, ask your question because you looked at this box that got opened up. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, I guess, you know, uh, you know, the maximum amount of ammunition that you can take on the airplane or check, I should say. Uh, and you said five kilos. Eleven yes. pounds. Yes, five, five kilos, kilos or eleven pounds. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and then I was looking at this and I was saying, well, you can, you know, fit one, two, three, four, five uh, pistols in this case. Is there a limit? to the number of firearms you can check. Now, some airlines do technically have a limit. I believe it is United. Sounds right. But check at the time of your listening. Yeah. 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 But when they so when you go up to the counter, we have that interaction that we talked about in the previous episode. They're going to ask you, how many guns would you like to declare? What the real question they asked you was, how many pieces of luggage containing guns would you like to check? Oh, so okay. how many how many declaration tags do they need? That's yeah. what they're really. How many tags do I need Don't to get out of my drawer? Don't say I'm flying drawer? with four guns. Don't say I'm flying with I four guns. I have one case. case. Okay. Or okay. Or both of my parcels have guns in them. I have two. You know, like if you had a carry gun in one and you had long guns in the other one, yeah, or something like that. Okay. But the question they're asking you is, how many pieces of luggage containing firearms would you not like to check? Which is not the most many... intuitive answer you would give when asked that question. Right. Right. No. Right. 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 So that's one of those that's one of those that's know the question tip. they're asked. Yes. And like even then, like, you know, so I mean, if they have a regulation on how many they have, most of them don't know that. And rarely do they count. But be be aware of it because yes, you could absolutely yep. run into another yeah, nice thing have about four. flying with a case yep. like this. Yep. Well, you don't we were, have to show anybody anything. And mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you were talking about locks earlier. I've got a, a lockable hard case uh, that I've flown with actually multiple times with a single lock, but I'd put it in the middle, and it pretty much you couldn't get mm-hmm. into the the case, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Uh, but I got pinched for that one time, and that was when I ran into that hiccup where, uh, and you were talking earlier about. <laughs> in the previous podcast, so let's reference that. If you want all the information, go listen to that one. But they'll say, hey, can you stand here? Or this, they actually said, hey, everything looks good to go. Go through security. We'll call you if we need something. Well, yeah. they actually called me back through. I had to go check on that. I ended up having to think, goodness, there was a lock at the airport that just fit. So one I could call little qualify. pink ones that uh, might as well be like, you get it off of the fingernail clipper if oh, you're a it, thief. It looked and like it cost $70. It, yeah. yeah, it looked like, I mean, it was basically a children's toy, but long story short, was able to, you know, get on the jet, but I was thinking, my goodness, I'm not going to get on the jet because I don't well, have that, two locks. That mm-hmm. happened with this case coming back from SHOT Show. We always fly with two locks on this case and that there's time, four holes. that time the lady said, there's four holes. You need to have four locks. And I said, show me the rule. And she actually went back and 15 minutes later, came back with the rule printed out. You savage. But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I three gunned her. But uh, yeah, she's like, she's like, <laughs> I don't you know have what to. that means. He well, asked the our, RO for the rule. The RO, when the RO oh, was okay. like, you can't do that. And we're like, show us the rule. And so that's, you know, then, when, when they're going to make things. Interpretation is important to <laughs> that reference. Interpretation is important. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. right. That was, uh, that's my bad. The other thing, too, if you there. fly with something like this and your gun goes back into the back room, um, and they need to check your guns and go through your case. Um, that's another place where it's nice to know the order you had things in because um, I've had it before where they asked to go through it and look at the stuff, and they unzipped my case, took it out, and then put it back in, and nothing fit. So it's mm-hmm. like it's really nice to go back in and have it so that you know how your gear's flying. Yeah, that's a good but point. That's something good you point. don't have to do if you have the pre-cut foam. Correct. Okay. Excellent stuff, guys. Appreciate that. What do you do, uh, real quick, here's a, here's a question I'll throw out there. What do you do, let's say you get to your destination, right, and you're driving around, and then maybe you get pulled over for speeding, and you got this in the back seat. 
or something. Well, like depending that. on local regulations. This is just kind of this is just a good question to know anytime you're carrying around a gun. I mean, most, yeah, most law enforcement officers don't care. They don't care, right? Right. Yeah, so if and they then, ask, be you, truthful. But. Yeah. Do you have to? You don't have to necessarily do anything, right? Um, it so on the state. Th- yeah. So some state regulations are different, or they're all different. But um, a lot of places, the first thing you need to do when you get pulled over is declare to them that you have a firearm in the vehicle. Hmm. So know where you're traveling, know their local rules and regulations, and you might have to legally say, uh, "I'm traveling with a firearm. Here's my driver's license." Right mm-hmm. before you say anything else, it's mm-hmm. a law. So, well, I mean, case in point, I was going back to school one time. I'd been uh, coyote hunting uh, with a buddy of mine, and I was traveling back late at night and uh, got pulled over. And, you know, I was going through, you know, being polite with the officer. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he shines a flashlight in the back seat because I just had my rifle across the back. He goes, Oh, wish you would have told me about that. And I said, Yeah, I didn't really know how to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of those rules pertain to carrying a firearm. Concealed yep. carrying a loaded firearm is where a lot of those rules come into play. Every state's different. Yeah. But, like, if you're, you know, concealed carrying, I would put that into a separate category instead of this in the back seat. Yeah, yeah. Amongst other luggage. I mean, um, if they bring it up, be truthful. But I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go out of the way. You know, to be like, oh, hey, I got a bunch of stuff in the back, you know? Yeah, yeah. I understand mean, yeah. also And that I didn't ask that to be like a gotcha question either. I was just genuinely yeah. curious. Cause just it can be, though. Something, <laughs> yeah, something people... Mm-hmm. Just understand that it could be different sometimes. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be different everywhere. Depends. Well, like, it could be different between the person you interact with. Yeah. I mean, cops are people, too. Yep. They, everyone's different. They're all having a different day. Yep. Yeah. That's so. the truth. The other all thing, right. too, with flying with ammo, you know, ammo packing... Oh, yeah, um, is oh my gosh! Yeah, ammo packing is there's there's different uh, regulations based on who you're flying with, but typically, you know, it's a TSA approved ammo container, which mm-hmm. you've got a bunch of options out there. Even a the lot factory. of people don't know that the factory box is a TSA approved ammo yep. container. Um, little blue snappy cases that guys use for reloading, you can use those. Um, the other thing you can use is um, the magazines. So you can actually load your magazines and really? put those in the case as long as they're not in the firearm. But a magazine is a is a TSA approved ammo container. I didn't yes. realize that. No, but like a like a box of ammunition, like a factory yeah. box of ammunition. Uh, and I think at one time this wasn't the case, but I do believe now you can pack that yep. with the firearm. Yep. Yep. Hmm. I tell you what, factory box of ammunition are probably the most secure boxes on the planet. You see the bloody thumbnail you end up with just yep. trying to open one of those things at the end that you they make you think twice <laughs> people that design oh, that's a deterrent are, in itself jim <laughs> that's the original <laughs> chinese finger trap that is yep. that is all right good stuff packaging your firearms and ammunition all right next up we got something else about traveling with firearms stay tuned until then thank you as always for tuning in catch you next time bye be easy